Well, hi there. Well, hello. How's it going, Josh? It is going well. How are you? Doing Isaacs? well. Doing well. Episode 99. 99. We got 91, 99 episodes, and, and this is one. This, <laughs> it seems like 99 <laughs> have been a problem. Uh, we've had many a problem. Uh, we should we should just have a blooper real quick. We play, should. But we don't want to have a three hour episode. So yeah. Um, before we get into what we're going to get into, uh, if you haven't yet, please hit subscribe down, right down there. There you go, Josh. There you go. Yeah, right down I'm not there. As versed right in this. down there. I'm not an on camera personality, so I'm not sure where to. I show the be. smash the like button. I think. Yeah, is what do the kids it. Say smash. Smash it, and the then like make sure you. Yeah. Hit that bell, and you'll Ding. receive all of our notifications when we do stuff. So, um, you can also, you know, patreon.com slash audio roast, audio roast.com, audio roast on Spotify, audio roast this, audio roast that, and we're done with the business. Yeah. All right. Merch. Don't forget merch. Merch, please, dear God, merch, merch because it's fun. Um, okay, yes. so what has been your, what's been some highlights for you in general, not, not this, but in general? Uh, of doing the show and and honestly some low points let's hit that maybe let's 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 just open up and, and talk to the people first of all it's really weird being in this chair is it it is man I'm it's gonna happen again no I'm, it's gonna I'm happen sure. again uh, well okay that's fine but i'm out of my comfort zone yeah it's like i'm being interviewed that's right yeah. uh, let me start the timer okay do it all right uh, okay high, so high spots low spots High spots, uh, the high spots, I would say, just getting to meet all these different musicians that I would never have a chance otherwise because we don't run in those circles. Yeah. Avril Cates. Right. Probably would never know who that kid was unless, you know, we had him on the show. And then I see him all the time at the cellar, and the kid is amazing. Yeah. And just all these, getting to know all these people and getting a deeper connection with the music community. And that deeper connection, I think, means something because whenever I see somebody out and about like, Avril, for example, yeah. I almost have like this dad thing, like that's my boy, you know, yeah. like that kind of thing. It's like, man, you just you really are more proud of people whenever you really understand who they are. Yeah. So it's it's exactly the goal with all this is um, getting to invest in people as individuals, but also expanding each other's circles. Absolutely. So yep. yeah, or squares or triangles or whatever shape you're in, whatever shape you feel. Uh, what about the opposite end? What's <laughs> <laughs> what sucked so far? What sucks? <laughs> Technical difficulties. Mm -hmm. I mean, every you, every you, week you would just hope for one show that we walk that in thing, that things will just run smoothly, perfectly. But no, never, never, not once yet. Not once, not once, not yet. once. Yeah, yeah. See there, right there. <laughs> I think we so only see back. that. Yeah. So, okay. uh, but yeah. It's it's never ending, you know. And what's funny is when Just we like that story from the '80s. It's a never ending story, and they're redoing it. I know. I'm not uh, looking forward to. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay, looking. So less, you you and you're looking forward to that. I'm looking less forward to that than I was the remake of the Lord of the Rings. Okay. Well, it's not even a remake. Okay. I shouldn't have well, even said we'll that. We'll talk Sorry. about that after we're done recording. There you go. Because we could get into some stuff. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, for me, yeah. high part has been um. Exactly what you said, but to embellish on that, even for myself, feeling more accepted in the scene um, at a deeper level, you know, mm -hmm. like um, that people are investing in me as much as I'm investing in them kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and it's it just, it's one of those things. Everybody wants to be a part of something. And I, I feel right. like I am a part of something. I don't feel like I'm a bigger part of something or a, I'm just in it with everybody. You know what I mean? Right. Well, you know, if you, what's really cool about what you did is that if you felt like you were walled off from the scene you just created a door and invited yourself in. you invited all these your, yourself into these situations by inviting these people in to get to know you right so you created an outlet to get in there and to become known in the scene you're not wrong you're not wrong yeah and i've tried and to cool, i've dude. tried to walk that line delicately too right. because i don't want to come off as a pompous ass and then I look like I'm closing that door to people. I right. want it to, you know, I am trying to help. Like, for as an example, I've got a coworker who, uh, her boyfriend just moved here in the area and is a musician and is a drummer. And like, hey, does anybody know how I like to even get in the scene? I'm like, actually, blah, blah, blah. Like, yes, right. I do now. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas before, I would have been like, I don't know, post on Craigslist. Right. And that does nothing for anybody. Right. So, yeah. Um, man, the show's come such a long ways. 
It has. Uh, so what what Joshua and I decided to do for, on this episode is almost a um, greatest memories or the greatest hits or the best of or it would be called a clip show. Yeah, we do doing it were clips. Like a sitcom or something. Doing clips. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we've, we've kind of hand-selected a few that mean a lot to both of us. Mm -hmm. uh, some are funny, some are sad, some are naked. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this first one... Thanks, Jay. Right, this first one is, uh, fittingly, the first episode uh, of the show. And it, we're obviously going to play just a couple minutes of each of these. We're not going <laughs> to make this a big deal. But for me, uh, as I started this... Um, Man, it started as such a small idea and became this, and it's it's wild to me, man. It's so wild, um, and and the growth that we've had, the places that we've done this from, and that kind of thing. We started out in the spare room of my apartment, which I pointed out to Josh. I know yeah. you guys can't see this on camera, but there, we're sitting on this rug that's like a ten foot wide rug. The room was no bigger than that rug. From I mean, it's just nuts. That I fit more than half of this stuff in that room and had two guests from day one, yeah. every show that we've done with guests. Um, it's just nuts, man. So uh, with any first... You, you hit it well because I always assumed that... I knew it seemed tight in there. Yeah. But I always thought people were like able to get out and go to another place of a house because i assume you oh, were yeah. living in no, a no, house no. i didn't know right. it was such a small apartment yeah and i've been to your apartment it's like How yeah the that hell? desk that you sit behind the curtain on yeah was right here and i've got an l-shaped desk that, the one yeah. that i used at the rift right nuts. here and it was a tv right there a tv right here a camera here and a monitor here for the so we all three had the same setup of basically what we've yeah. got now the the back side of all this that nobody knows about is the like month, two months that I spent at home before I did anything. Uh, hey, uh, can you uh, can you phone in on this? And and I want to check the audio levels on this and all this back behind the scenes technical stuff so that there be no technical issues. And there never were. No, never, not at all. Um, so yeah, there's a lot uh, of things that are going to sound different, look different, feel different because they were. It was a first. You have to start somewhere. And this is where we started. So I'm just going to jump right into it. Episode one, you've never seen it if you weren't there for it, and you'll never see it again if you're not here for it now. All right, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to the first ever episode of the Audio Roast Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Isaacs. Um, I'm glad you're along for the ride. It's going to be uh, a little bumpy one because it's the first and it's always that way. So uh, bear with us. Um, when I say us, of course, for the first episode, um, the first people I reached out to were my own bandmates. I mean, you know, you got to do a little plug in when you can. So um, I'm joined here today by uh, my longtime friends, um, fellow Death May Die bandmates. I uh, want to introduce you first. This is uh, Mr. Cody Schmidt, who plays bass. Cody, you want to say hello? Mm. <laughs> Perfect. Couldn't have said that better myself. <laughs> uh, and of course, um, we've also got more band members of Death May Die. Here is Mr. Aaron Anderson. What up? Everybody's rocking the threads tonight, I guess. So uh, anyway, uh, just want to say thanks again for tuning in. We've got some fun times. Uh, we're going to do some games. We're going to do some um, uh, roasting, if you will. Um, all that over a nice cup of coffee. So if you're drinking anything with us, join along. Um, we're in for a treat today. So cheers. What a difference in look and sound yeah. and feel, huh? You've come a long way, baby. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, yeah. we certainly have. Um, you know, and that was a thing like I being a first, I had to have something that felt comfortable. And so obviously right. being surrounded by my bandmates definitely helped yeah, with that. That's a good way to start out. Yeah. I, I hope that uh because in retrospect, like if somebody were to just look at that, they're like, Oh, you're playing favorites already out of episode yeah. one. It's like, no, I gotta be comfortable. Yeah. Um I will say one thing I've taken a lot of pride in is uh the variety of guests. You know, Absolutely. there's been a few that have been repeats now. Um, but I've tried so hard to keep you know, because there's so many people in this community that I want to try to include everybody. And, um, and, and also you've told me, and I, you may have mentioned it to, to the audience as well, that you try to get diverse people as, as guests in the same, probably yeah. someone who wasn't normally running the same circles. Yeah. So that way you maybe can make more connections within the community by right. Yeah. Yep. A hundred percent. Either people that would have never met or people that, you would think, well, surely they've met, but maybe there's some kind of something and they haven't or right. whatever. And that's a perfect lead into what we had next with uh, when we did our first soft rock episode. I had never mm. met Jake Simpson. And uh, so really? that, that night was my first time meeting Jake on the show. Um, and we had Dirk Allman from the Dirty Saints. So I'm like, well, two great singers and both love yeah. the genre. So what game did we play? It, yeah, we put it together and uh, played a little cutoff karaoke. So oh. let's check it out. Steve Perry. Oh, Sherry. Give him the easy one, why don't you? Oh, You're going to say funny. everything that this. you don't have is the easy this one. This is not Journey. This <laughs> yeah. is Steve Fair. It is. It's completely different. Bull. Completely. Um, okay. Dirk, you ready, bud? Uh-huh. Okay. Wait a minute. Key F? That's not F. That's higher than F. It's F. That's like B flat or something. It's F plus, if you will. Research the body of your body! I got a Next time I'll get a different key. Sorry. Will that work? Should have been gone. Yeah. Knowing how I made you feel. Should have been gone. I hear nothing. Have to amazing singers there i know right yeah. yeah and then we all ended together that was some fun yeah. stuff it's always fun having uh well i was gonna say singers but musicians in general but really whenever yeah. people are even loose enough to sing right and, and just cut up and have a good time on the show that makes things a lot of fun mm -hmm. um especially with some of the games that we play we um now that we've gotten in a bigger studio and stuff and we actually have the room to have multiple people if we need more than two people to play a game right back in the day we were forced to have to um do things virtually and a lot of that too is because of the pandemic you know we weren't allowed to have a lot of people around each other uh, and that was another thing that i was always really careful of and took a lot of pride in was after every show and every guest everything in the whole place would get anything that i thought somebody might touch was all sanitized down and sprayed down and all that kind of stuff but um while we had dirk and jake on the show uh i thought well what what better opportunity to uh test some more virtual stuff at when we were first at the riff and so we had Julia Drake Cobb, then Lay Cobb, uh, and uh, LK Castle Bradford. Yeah. Uh, I thought, well, if we're going to have extra people, we need to make sure that these people have at least three names. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, we brought them in to play some virtual password. And as we were getting things started, um, 
This is right before we got you. No, you were there for that. Yeah, yeah, you were there for that. Um, but we were doing some some backstaging and stuff, and they were chatting amongst themselves. And I won't spoil anything, but just know that Elky is watching a football game while playing games with us. Right. So let's see what happens. Let's talk uh -oh. Here we go. We'll we'll go that route. The only one I can remember um, is the belt size is equator. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Know. Same. I don't. I'm not good with those kind of. I'm not good with a yo mama joke. No. Not that I'm not good with it. I'm just not good with them. Well, not right now. R right. Well, the, you know, mama's boys. Yeah. True. I, I totally am. Hard to go there. You know? It is. Hundred percent. Yep. Yeah. For shill. Okay. So, um. I mean, uh, what the hell was that? I liked it, Jared. Oh, I don't that care. Was super loud. What was that? <laughs> that just made me sorry. Was that? Green Bay just got a touchdown. <laughs> oh, Green Bay got a touchdown. Well, hell, that's the first one, wow. isn't it? Oh, my God. I thought something broke. Hey, the Packers just scored a touchdown there. Oh, that's awesome. Mr. Gold cheese head. I love those Packers. It's time for God. Gene. Holy fuck, start the car, Bobby. I, We're going home. Yeah, it's all over. Hey, I thought about seven cats died all at the same time. <laughs> I'm over here looking Good. at the thing to see if it was like some sort of sound cue. Yeah, no, yeah. You're like, oh, oh that's loud. You're like, you're like Jared, Bay's. that's a oh, bit much. Oh, you need to mute me. Elkie's watching Green Bay. <laughs> Good Lord. Yeah, that line says baby pterodactyl. That's why yeah. I didn't want to come in. I was watching my ball game. <laughs> I can't well, ball game. Oh, well, sorry to distract Are you. Are drinking your bush light? <laughs> I mean, I would <laughs> No, it's Milwaukee's best, dude. Oh, and it's pronounced Milwaukee. <laughs> Milwaukee's best, don't you know? Oh, crap. Yeah, okay. Oh, crap. All right, we got to keep it together. Oh, we got to shout it in here, Packers. All right. Packers. So, all, right, all, right, all right. All right, let's bring it in. Let's rate it in, folks. Oh, my goodness. That was hilarious. <laughs> I have not seen that clip in a long time, and I forgot that that happened. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Sure enough. I mean... That's that's part of what makes this so much fun is just the unpredictability of what the heck is going to happen. Right. We can right. have a plan written out on paper, but the real life and the people is it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, one of the things that we were talking about earlier was the um, the importance of the scene to us and mm -hmm. uh, ways to kind of strengthen that and who we're bringing together and stuff. And this is one of the first times that you and I both, yeah. as soon as it was done, we're like. That was a good yeah, episode. That's what the show and should be. That is a perfect example of bringing two people together that, man, they should know each other. Absolutely. But they don't. You know, at, and the getting together really occurred after the show. Yeah. They, they did talk back and forth, but the connection yeah. is, was behind the scenes. And that's what's amazing about that episode. Yes. And you get to see somebody that's brand new to the scene, um, hasn't even played a single show yet. Versus somebody that's been a vet for 20-some years. I mean, it's it was so good. So we're going to jump over to our rap from 1999 episode that some oh, people were show. foolish enough to poo-poo on based on the name. No. And after this episode learned, hey, whatever your topic is, I'm in for because right. you're going to have people on that are going to be either entertaining, funny, or have some cool stories, something. So lesson learned on that. This is Savvy J and DJP. From the rap 1999 episode i mean it's right. i'm it's they need to be interviewed they need to be yes. on here i mean people there you need go to, people need to know what's around and people need yeah. to exactly to respect yeah and, well and and, and joshua and, over here I'll, I'll go over here to yeah, joshua joshua was a great example because go ahead and tell what you were what you were saying the other day about about what? your your circle oh, and yeah. the people you've been I've, around i've been playing in this town for like 25 years and i've like in the last year and a half, I've just expanded my circle. I've only been playing with like the same, like four, well, about 10 guys for that entire 25 years. And now that I'm kind of broken out of that, I've met all these new people and is it, and I've created new friendships through the podcast, through listening to Dan and Tara's show. Yep. And uh, so much so that I wanted to be a part of this podcast and came aboard on this. Right. Met Jared through all of that. Uh, and one of the things that I think that, our music community can do is every band here in town takes 15 to 20 minute breaks between sets. Yeah. And normally the house plays some music S savvy would, would the hip hop community be interested in taking like those 15 minute breaks just to get out and show their stuff? Because right. that's, you know, yeah, 
I mean, yeah, I wouldn't see why not. But I mean, then again, like I haven't done. I mean, I've played punk rock shows and stuff like that, but I haven't done like any hip hop shows yet. So therefore, right, right. you know what I mean? And I think like, like going back to what Jerry was saying about the 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 kind of genres are segregated to an uh -huh. extent. I don't think there's like, maybe I, correct me if I'm wrong, definitely do that. But I don't think there's like, not necessarily a support system for hip hop around here. But as right. far as venues go, I don't see like a lot of actual like front of house. And the ballroom, hang on, because you were yeah, talking about yeah. misconnections, and I want to fill this gap. Because, yeah, yeah, go, go for it. Go so, for it. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how long you've been in the scene around here, but I'll, I'll, I'll bring you up to speed. So we, we hit on the fact that the pandemic, uh, I'm trying not to cuss for some reason, but it fucked a lot of things up. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And one of the things was um, obviously some of the venues in town and bringing no income and looking at closing. One of those was the Outland Ballroom, yeah. uh, Front of House Lounge, and the Outland. That whole complex was yeah. looking at getting. So long story short, there's a GoFundMe, $3,500 or $35,000 or, or something like that. I can't remember the dollar amount. doesn't matter. We And and I was, I'm not even going to say I could, it was raised enough money was raised to keep it going. Yeah. Um, it, I do remember that. That, that, that whole, was amazing. That whole situation, as you know, we won't get into that. It no was a shit show. Yes, it was. So, and, <laughs> and, and thank God to Jimmy and everybody involved with, yeah. uh, with the outland that pulled out and was like, Oh, this is a bad move. But, um, uh, so basically, um, what, there was a guy named Kevin Dunn. I don't know if you know who this is. Yeah. 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 So this is somebody that's recorded some stuff for, for myself for death may die. Um, he has, uh, who is, uh, who is the Var the Varakis group. Um, has stepped in and stepped up, um, bought into the business, etc. And so he and he is a huge, huge um, rap, hip hop supporter, that kind of thing. Like that's what his his niche is in, in his recordings and stuff. So he's bringing a lot of support to that to the venues. Okay. So nice. so you're you're looking at playing probably the ballroom at front of yeah. house lounge, that yeah. kind of thing. Like that's a strong boom. Here's exactly where you need. I, to I be just don't know if there's out. like a crowd around that would go to shows there like is. that. Another so, so okay. Um, so you and I talked before we hit record or go live, um, that, um, um, uh, damn it names, uh, J rod, uh, Jared young, yeah, X cryptic and, and those guys -Cryptic, and Steven. Yeah. So, and that's yeah. the thing. So same kind of thing, even if you, you kind of squeeze in there, um, with maybe this isn't quite my genre. My band does this all the time and it's awkward, right. but you do find your people, your people actually find you. Um, and, and so like, I could see you with like literally just a, a singer songwriter, an acoustic kind of thing. And people hear it's, that's what I'm trying to tell you. And this is what Dan and Terry were trying to tell you is people hear your story uh -huh. the way that you are putting it out. Yeah. But I, I feel like maybe there's this, this filter of like, well, maybe people won't connect. They will fucking connect. Go yeah. play. Nice. So I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you twice. Help Let's me bring it. somebody here. And I want not for uh savvy J to not have played a show this time next year. Right. Oh shit. And damn, you, you've played casinos in bigger uh, areas. Right. If you're a rock band, when you're taking your break at a casino, what are they playing? They're playing hip hop. They're playing dance music. Yep. So that's yeah. Even even, if even Martha's yeah. Vineyard for crying out loud. Like last they night, they used to have DJs there. We, I, I used to play, play there. Friday. <laughs> I thought so. Martha's Vineyard's fun. It is. It really yeah. is. I played Friday and Saturday, and we really didn't have a whole lot of. If someone wasn't playing something on the uh, jukebox, we uh -huh. didn't have any music going on. Right. We. I would have loved to have a DJ yep. there. Especially now, knowing much more about you guys, right? I, you're, I think you would have done, would have killed like the 15, 20 minutes between our two sets. That would have given you thirty minutes. I see what you're saying. Low and, pressure, and, and would have introduced you to a whole new people, and it would have scared anybody off, especially with the band that I'm in. Exactly. That does such different variety. Right. Yeah. It's just we need to get it's, out of this mindset. And that's that, the thing too. And maybe that's uh, savvy. That's kind of a, a mind frame too. Is Get Don't think of, of it as like, so I've got to have a whole show. Yeah. No, just give them a little taste yeah. and make them want more. And then you're able to book more shows and, and go from Let's there. Do it's, it. it's exactly jump Let's in, do, do it, it, even if it's a little tiny bit. Right. Wow. Um, yeah. Good idea, by the way, yeah. on that with the injection of doing something different during your breaks. Right. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. I'm happy to help people make connections and. It also, again, like we were saying, it almost makes me with that proud papa kind of thing. Like, get out there and do your thing. You know, don't be don't be afraid to get out on stage and show people what you got. Um, <laughs> speaking of showing people what you got, yeah, I know it's coming up. <laughs> we uh, continue to talk about the local music scene, but we were also talking about um, on our fourth episode of a talking shop shows like the voice and american idol its role in the music industry um if people around here if that was a thing that would you do it that kind of thing 
And we we were able to, what's funny on these talking shops, the truth is we did those because sometimes scheduling didn't work and we couldn't get yeah. guests. This one we ended up with like, I don't know, eight people mm -hmm. um, joining in on this. And I was like, well, all right, this is a thing. Uh, so we kind of went around round robin and talked to each person and got their opinion on the local scene, those types of shows and that kind of thing. And then we got to a certain somebody and yeah, well, there's no word sometimes. So let's go ahead and play this one. And I'm going to go to one of our um, French girls, uh, Jay Stevens. <laughs> Can you draw me like one of your French girls? Um, Jay, I'm the, I'm, I think this is going to be my grinder profile. Uh, I approve. Well. Um, <laughs> so uh, I think I think you're. Uh, I hope your battery's charged. You're going to get a lot of hits. Um, so <laughs> so I want to morph this question, uh, and I'll start with you, Jay. If you had the opportunity, would you be on a show like this? I, uh, if it was super easy, maybe I, I would not go a, a, I'm way too old for most of these ones, but I'll tell you a story. When I was a radio DJ in new Orleans was when yes. in excess was doing that supernova show. And somehow I got like a front of the line pass, uh, just because whatever I, you know, I would, right. because I was on the radio and people knew I was a singer. And I did really well in the audition round and made it to the next round. But then uh, I couldn't do it because I had the radio show and it would be uh, like a sway like, So conflict of interest is what you're talking so about. So I couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. But it, I had a good time doing that. But I didn't have, I had right. the VIP tr experience. I didn't have Correct. to wait in the sun for eight hours and with a bunch, you know. So my experience was a little bit different. I don't think. I would, uh, I like if there was an all age one and it came to Springfield, I wouldn't do it. I'd probably go down there and interview some yeah. people for the show, but I would not. Uh, no, I'm 51 years old, dude. You know, I'm, I've got, I feel like I've got a glitch in the matrix doing what I'm doing. Right. I like 50 shows a year and make good money and I get the, <laughs> which, and honestly, Jay, good Twitter. for you on that because uh, the fact that you're still able to do what you enjoy, uh, first and foremost, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Crazy, um, right? And, and you know, if I'm asking myself this question, I don't know that I would because um, even though I'm a, I'm a lead singer, I don't have that lead singer ego, meaning I am more of a team player. I would rather it, I would rather it be um, you showcasing my band than showcasing me um, because it's it's a group effort, you know, and I, I want my my uh, cohorts or my coworkers, if you will, um, to be recognized equally with me. I don't want to take all the you know, it's. Uh, that's that's not what people see when they come to see Jared. That's not what people see when they when they go to see Jay Stevens. You know, it's it's a collective effort, and so um, and I think that's I, I try to I, I try to steal the show. I sure. think Let's that that's um, well, of course, and and just like we've got some people here trying to steal some shows. Um, uh, yeah, let's uh, out too. All right, let's, all let <laughs> let's do it. Take your shirt off, guys. Uh, <laughs> Tara, adjust your camera for Jay. By the way. Oh God! I knew something was gonna make us go off the rails, but who knew it was gonna be <laughs> this? Uh, yeah. So uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, he's got his shirt off too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already in my underwear, so. Oh my God! This is amazing. This is too funny. Um, <laughs> I'm trying. To and I haven't been wearing pants at all since we started. Yeah, so. Just tuned in now. They're going to go, whoa, what is going on? I haven't been wearing pants since January. <laughs> yes! No, people. <laughs> I think people expect it unless Tara takes her pants off. Uh, well, you know, as far as, oh, yeah, it's Jared's podcast. Of course, there's going to be a bunch of naked guys on it. <laughs> Uh, oh my goodness. Okay. So, um, I want to jump over, um, to the right here. Um, and Chris, once you get your, your glad your spectacles cleaned off, um, what is, what is the chance of you doing a show like this? If it, if you had the opportunity, is this something that you would, you would jump on or lay out on? Well, wow. <laughs> we probably should have had a parental warning on that. First. Yeah. I didn't know that was coming. Yeah. I was coming in hot. Um, uh, Typical Jay Stevens, though, as we've yeah, learned. I mean, we should expect something like that. Oh, my gosh. Uh, oh, man. 
This is a hard one. So this transition is going to suck, but it yeah. is what it is. So uh, one of the people that was in that video who is always having a good time with us and cutting up and, and starting good conversations, uh, good ideas, good jokes, good timing, all that kind of stuff, uh, was a friend of the show, Al Hutches. And uh, we haven't forgotten about Al. And short after he passed away, suddenly, uh, we decided to do an impromptu midweek tribute early in the morning on a weekday. And uh, Josh, I believe you were at work still. Yeah, I believe it had been snowing. So it was snowing was like just, crazy. Everything was kind of shut down, so work was very, very light. And I was just out driving around doing stuff from my houses. It's like, you know what? I got a couple minutes to spare. So. Yeah. And I thought maybe I missed a a memo or something and you were like changing the times and i thought i was fired or something so i i honestly Aww. no i'm joking <laughs> you don't have the power to fire anybody i i don't and even if you i can't. did i wouldn't because no. i enjoy everybody i work with i really do so um but no I, I heard you guys talking about it. it's like yeah, i need to be there part of that yeah yeah he meant a lot to even more than just myself and dan and tara and you other people that watch the show and that's kind of what we get into on this right so uh, we talk about the community that we've created, so let's jump to it. It's, it's kind of hard. I don't know where to start, and I don't know if I, I just jump, jump into it or what, but um, I guess I'll pass to you guys first since there's two of you and one of me. <laughs> so um, uh, what what was it? Um, what did Al mean to you, and what did Al mean to the Unsung Dreamers? Well, one thing I was going to say, um, just uh, whoops, a little bit more of a global uh, take. Mm -hmm. on the answer to that question is uh you know tara and i are relatively new at podcasting i mean we've spent we're 50 years old man <laughs> and uh we've been doing music and we've been singers and we've been uh, in bands and and uh, all kinds of things like that and had never really uh delve into the concept of podcasting until about two and a half years ago when we started the unsung dreamers what i find very interesting is that the Oh, the, the fulfillment that we get from it and the uh, validation we get from it is completely different than being in a band. I mean, you, you can be in a band and you do your show and then at the end of the night, hopefully people are like, oh, you guys are great. And there's a thing there, right? Sure. And podcasting, it's completely different. Uh, it, it, uh, you're, you're dealing with so much more information you know, even in our interview uh, episodes, which are, you know, upwards of two hours uh, sometimes, there is still like a community and a camaraderie and a friendship and an inspiration that happens between us and our guests. And then when the COVID thing kind of started hitting hard and we went over to our live ideas, we really weren't set out to do live shows. That's why we make jokes between each other that you're exactly you're, you're very organized and Tara and I are very not organized. Right. Because that's not what you set out to do. Yeah. It wasn't, right. It wasn't really our thing. We were just doing it to keep that connection up. Well, when that happened is when we started gaining different kinds of fans, Al being one of them. And when we you know, would get in the middle of our shows, no matter how bombastic and disorganized and crazy they were, the community and the comments was what was driving our entire thing. We even made an attempt to do a few shows that were themed and thought out and written out and they weren't as fun yeah. because it was just sort of like Tara and I plowing through what our agenda was as opposed to allowing the entire conversation with our commenters to become like the thing. It's yeah. why I've worn my justice, my hashtag justice for cuddles t-shirt. Right. Because this t-shirt is the result of one of our conversations we had back in Thanksgiving time yep. where all of our commenters were jumping in and we were all making jokes together. I was telling a story about trying to buy a cow for cheap. As long as I buy it the day it's born, it ain't worth nothing. And all <laughs> right. these kind of things. And then it went on from there. And then I was going to brand it. And I'm going to brand it with the Dirty Saints. And I did that on the t-shirt. That was a whole story that happened during one of our episodes. And it sort of not just manifested itself into a t-shirt. It also just like we were all joking together yeah. and I can see I've, I've had people come up to us in public and just been like hashtag justice for cuddles. Yeah. <laughs> right. Know, like, yeah. And they probably half of them probably don't even know what the origin is. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they just know it's a didn't... thing. And so they want in on it. Exactly. Yeah. And Al was such a big part of many of those conversations. His sense of humor 
was always just right at the perfect time and he would dig on you when it was yep. time to dig and yep. just digs, edgy enough his, just edgy yeah enough. his digs were smart they yeah. were funny um we bought a website one night uh, <laughs> live on our show <laughs> right um as a as a as a result of barb and al and and i think joshua pool was there and i mean we were all just chiming in and then tara just went live and bought a website <laughs> <laughs> because us and our fans were all like kind of joking about it together and it all kind of came together together. Yeah. Yep. And um Al was always there. He was always funny. Um and uh and so what I was getting back to being podcasters as opposed to being in bands is you do develop relationships with these people. Um and and we're seeing a lot of them right now on this feed yeah. because yep. a lot of our fans are also your fans and hopefully today with this mixture of it going live on both our pages some right. of our fans will get to meet each other here I don't know yeah and it becomes like a totally different thing I mean Tara and I have been <clears throat> recognized in public as unsung drummers. right yeah like not as Machine Gun not as Johnny Q Public not as touring with the Statlers. <laughs> Like, yeah, right. well, and that's the thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, you guys are the unsung dreamers. Like, whoa, that was weird. Yeah. Like, that was it's a really very weird different. It is I, different. It we really were on is. A walk one time. Actually, we were riding our bikes. Ride bikes. We were going to yeah. ride our bikes over to Emo's from our house. And we got stopped in the middle of the street over on uh, Pickwick. Pickwick? I think it was Pickwick. And they yeah. were like, aren't you guys the unsung dreamers? I'm like, whoa. Yeah. It's it, weird. It is crazy. Yeah. 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 And we let people in. All of us do. You do. We do. We let them in on shows like this right here. We'll go ahead and go live right now. We'll, we will express our feelings. We, there's probably going to be some emotions, I would imagine. But we end up being so transparent, which is different than being on stage. Yes. That our fans deeply get connected with us. Yeah. yeah. And it's a different kind of connect. It really is. Because like, like when you're talking about being on stage, for example, it's you and four or five other people. Yeah. When it's this, it's everybody watching along. And, yeah. and on our show and your show both, we keep everybody very um, engaged. And, and it's a very interactive thing. We want them to feel a part of the show. Right. We, and, and this is what I say on, on Audio Roast is, um, this is all my crap that you see that we're surrounded by. But it's it's their show. I mean, this is both of uh, our podcasts are, are about bringing people together, um, both in the music community and just people in general. Yeah. Like we want that sense of community. So yeah. um, when we lose somebody in that community, it, it really hits home, yes. you know, because it's yeah. what we really work hard for. Even right here, Jeff Ward is saying, rest in peace, Al. I didn't know you, but I always read your comments. He was Al was always the jokester that yeah. got everybody all <laughs> fired up he usually was the stimulator for other people coming up with uh, jokes they were proud of but it usually was an extension of when al would say something ornery and then all of a sudden people would feel that comfort of like okay if he's gonna go there i'm gonna go there right too. yeah and um jeff also said he's actually pulled over he pulled over yeah he uh, yeah, jeff cool. is um met, he messaged me earlier today and was like hey what happened um to al and uh i was like well we're gonna go live here in a little bit so he's like oh i'm driving from carthage so yeah and i was like dude be careful because i know those roads outside of springfield probably oh, yeah. are no good yeah. Um, yeah but yeah speaking of comments so yeah we've got elkie and terry we've got a lot of both of our regulars michael cindy yeah. um condolences to friends and family so sad misses memes and comments yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. the thing like we 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 all have our personal lives and our personal stuff but what we choose to put out there into the universe on facebook and youtube and all that like it's just an extension of us and that was al al was a funny guy and yeah, he yeah. he liked to rib on the square uh, as a wrestling term he was a wrestling fan he also right. loved my, he he was a big fan of my other show um and so um yeah i i just you know it's like i said whenever you lose somebody that you're trying to build a community up of um it kind of it kind of takes you back more so than uh in, in any other situation, I think. Yeah. And, and like you said, it's just more personal, more vulnerable. Yeah. 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 And interestingly, um, I must admit, I've never met Al either. Never met him in person. I yeah. never met him in person. Here yeah. you go. So, uh, and here I am. And I'm glad to be here. And I'm glad to do this. Yes. And it's important to me. Yeah. It's important to me for yeah. somebody to have been such a follower of us and engaged in what we do and and help with the jokes and help with the stories and, and manifest things like this funny T-shirt. Yeah, um, and accelerate what you think might be a good idea, and then when they run with it, like justice, for, justice for cuddles, you're like, hey, maybe this is the thing. Yeah, you know, yeah, and it's know. like, Let's and that's see. what I mean. Like, it's their show. Like, they take the reins on a lot of this stuff. Correct. We just throw it out there and see what sticks. Yes. Um, Barb says, 
You are all people of many talents and serve multiple pur purposes as friends and family in our lives. What the hell's happening oh, behind you, Jared? I think Pod Boy showed oh, up. Oh, no way. <laughs> What's up, Pod Boy? Hey. How you What's doing, up, man? What's up, Pod Boy? Thanks. What a yeah. guy for showing up. Holy you crap. Take a mic. Aww. Joshua, you're the best. So this is what you guys do to us. That's right. Oh, Dan's number one. Oh, man, I was the star of the show for just a second. It was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Only on our end. Nobody at home knows oh, what you're talking about. That? No. Oh, <laughs> Joshua, okay. do you have anything to add or anything you'd like to say on behalf of Al? You know, yeah. I, I was always looking forward to his comments. Uh, you he always had something funny or something insightful to say. He was, even though I never met him, I felt I knew him. Yes. Yes. I want to say that. For some reason, right or wrong, I think you reminded me a lot of each other. Okay. Like your your sense of sarcasm and humor and stuff, and just like knowing when to jab. And like Kara said, how hard to jab and when to like, okay, you know what? You were good with that humor accelerator on that. And I and and I think you and Al shared a lot of that. So yeah, yeah. similar, yeah. similar. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, good stuff. Um, I thought it was a fitting way to do a tribute to somebody that yeah had invested in us to to do the same by investing in him. Yeah. So. Uh, speaking of things that mean a lot to you, uh, I've asked you before about your favorite episode. Right. And you've had a couple different answers. I have. But indefinitely, at the end of the day, this has got to be it, right? I would say so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think of this one because I just, we've done so many. I, I was like, all right, let's roll through them. And I don't know why it doesn't pop out in my brain more. Right. Well, I'll tell you. Okay. Because you suppressed this. Because... As uncomfortable as you feel being in this uh -huh. chair, don't forget that we swapped completely in our yeah. roles, and you hosted that show. I did. I took your role and just... And I was so uncomfortable. <laughs> and it was great for me. It <laughs> I was. I was like, yeah. I got to sit back and just... <laughs> um, but Never again. I mean, I may be number two, but I won't, I won't ever take that desk again. <laughs> So let's. Uh, I'll let you do this, and we'll we'll give you your old hosting duties back, and I'll let you. I turned on the dinner again. Go throw it in. <laughs> okay, so we did. Uh, Petra was playing in Branson, and nah. so I uh, had connections through the family, and we decided to go ahead and do an interview with the whole band. The whole band. The whole band. Well, we tried to do an interview with the whole band. Exactly. We had some. Uh, let's just say that uh, the gentlemen, most of them, are like in their seventies, so technology's. Not their strong. Not speech. a strong point. So, but it was great. I I've known, um, Greg for years and known his daughters for even longer. And so, talking with Greg was cool uh, again. But then we uh, talked to John or the bass player. Uh, so yeah, there it was a cool cool time for me. I enjoyed it. And honestly, it was a cool time for me. Not growing up a Petra fan, not knowing a lot about them, but just there were some feeling some aura of like how special this was to so many people yeah and for them to be on our little show that we had right. started only like less than 50 episodes in or whatever it mm -hmm. was i was like man this is pretty cool yeah so without any further ado josh i'll let you throw to this one all right this is petra from episode what i don't know episode number episode to back and enjoy mr louis weaver drummer extraordinaire how you doing louie uh, hey look there's Fine, mickey <laughs> yeah i got hey. my mickey coda shirt up it's my birthday awesome <laughs> for those of you who don't know uh louie always has something mickey mouse oriented oh, nice. yeah he's got him on his drums it's just it's when you think of louie weaver you think of incredible drummer and also like this mickey mouse affinity so Nice. How you been doing, Louis? I've been great. I've been great. I'm awesome. hanging out with my family and hanging out with my new puppy. She's about a year old and uh, just uh, waiting on God to do all the stuff that he's called CPR to do and uh, just awesome. uh, having a blast. Awesome. That's great. Well, let's bring another one in. Uh, Mr. Greg Bailey. I did get that right. They were calling you Craig earlier and it started confusing me, thinking I got my information. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so, <laughs> Too great. Uh, how about that? I believe it's Greg. <laughs> it is Bailey, right? Yeah. And you do Greg play Bailey. bass, correct? What's that? You do play bass, correct? 
I do, bass and uh, cello. Yes, yes. How many more instruments do you play? Because I heard you play quite a few. Uh, it's just a dirty rumor that Louis started, but uh, uh, <laughs> Louis, I, play, <laughs> I play a few of them, but in Nashville, you just play, you just say the ones that you do best, or otherwise okay. someone will get you up on stage and you won't know what you're doing. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we're going to be looking forward to getting to know you a little bit more a little bit later. So let's go ahead and bring on Mr. Kirk Anderson. <laughs> now, Kirk, there's a rumor that you used yes. to play guitar with some local boys here. Yes. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. Springfield, Missouri, yes. Well, at the time, we were called The Edge. Yeah. And uh, I was the uh, infamous fourth band member uh, that was never replaced. But, yes, King's X, formerly The Edge, yes. Loved my uh, time here in Springfield, Missouri. Man, just the best time. Awesome. Uh, hey, could you could you explain to uh, our producer today, Jared, uh, just how awesome King's X is and how he should <laughs> be into him? Because he's he's a young guy. He doesn't get it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, look, King's X is a musician's band. They are, they are probably most well known. Yeah, that's, that's, so that's been the problem the whole time. I just need to be a musician, and then I'll understand. He's a singer. Got it. He's a singer. There you go. <laughs> you know, these guys, Jerry, Doug, and Todd, they're amazing, over-the-top, incredible at their instruments. You know, all of them are songwriters. All of them are singers. And, uh, yeah, just amazing musicians. I was really thrilled. And so excited to be a part of that group for about three years. Wow. Springfield, Missouri, in East Jefferson Street. Yes. Nice. Did you used to work at a music shop here in town? No, I did not. No. no. I worked at Wendy's, though, in Springfield. Really? Well, that, that may have been where I see <laughs> <laughs> Because I swear I talked to someone here in the town at a music shop, and they said they used to play with King's X. And I thought that might have been you, but nice. it could have been at Wendy's where I used to live. <laughs> Yeah, did you do the jingle for Wendy's or? <laughs> well, we were we were quite wealthy. That was just for effects to, to humble ourselves. And, you know, okay. <laughs> so you were kind of washing people's feet, like like Jesus would. <laughs> well, so that's that's, that's, yeah, that's one fresh. way to stay fresh and and not frozen. Yes. <laughs> Eat fresh, your soul is fresh. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yes. But yeah. All right, so let's bring in the next member, uh, John Lowry. Is he not there? I don't Anybody know. John? We'll see. Oh, oh, there he is. Is he there? Oh, kind of. Kind of. Sort of. Let's see if we can hear him at we least. Got, we got three quarters of his head. <laughs> <laughs> is, is the mic Looks muted? Like I, oh. Hello, John. Hello. Can you hear us? I can hear. I can hear you. Yes. Hold on. <laughs> it's. <laughs> It's is somebody done. learning how to play drums, or what is that? <laughs> Sounds like he's working in the junkyard. Let's get the blue, the blue <laughs> off. Well, how about listening to these big balls? <laughs> well, we get this. I think All I right, I'm going to mute John for a minute <laughs> until we can see him. Uh, yeah. He's <laughs> doing magic up in the corner. I agree. All right, let's 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 go ahead, Josh. All right, let's introduce Greg Voles. I've known this man for several years. I've known his family for even longer. Uh, incredible singer, great man, Mr. Greg Bowles. What? There he is. Hey, Greg, how are you? Good day, mate. Good day, mate. <laughs> Thanks no for worries, joining mate. us. No worries, mate. Good day, mate. <laughs> we're, we're here on the telly. <laughs> hey, Greg. Remember that time when we came to Texas and we had some salsa? Ooh. You know what? I actually am halfway in the midst of making some salsa, which leads me to believe that you never know when I have to run to the kitchen and not to. Right. <laughs> yeah, we, we've heard about this famous salsa of yours, yeah. so we are well, we are on board for that, sir. It's, uh, We're expecting it's yeah. bring a truck load up when you come to play. Uh, I, I'm gonna. I have to say this while I was listening to Kirk. Kirk, I may have a cassette tape of a live recording from the Edge with you and Jerry. And Doug and no. Ty, I may I have to dig. Oh I, and I, 
I had a Nakamichi stereo recorder with two mics, and oh, it was it was really good sounding for cassette. You made a recording, Greg. I made a recording. It was I forget what that club was, but I'm telling you what, it was a good night. The place was jam packed, and you guys were jumping around like jackrabbits. <laughs> <laughs> so are we expecting pretty soon? Long time ago. It's awesome. I want to hear it. Awesome. Yeah, we even had uh, Mr. Paul Carson join yeah. in on that, which how ironic. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Who's now playing with Petra. Um, is yeah. he is he doing dates with them as they're doing yeah. dates? Is that yeah. Yeah. technically it's CPR because uh, it's classic there was Petra two, yeah. re, reunited or something like that because they don't own the name to Petra. So Right. Anyway. Think of it as Van Halen and Van Hagar, essentially. Well, sort of. of. Of sorts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's playing with him, and gosh, who was that guy on camera, dude? <laughs> he looks like a whole different person. Oh, my gosh. I'm proud of you, man. Thank you. I really am. Um, I, I'm proud of so many people, and that's another part of what has made this so much fun is I, I sure don't want to take any credit, but it's hard to not feel like, well, something must be in the air right. when people don't see each other doing better and then strive to do better themselves. Right. That's pretty inspiring. It's pretty cool. Speaking of inspiration, uh, I've got to throw to what was one of my favorite episodes. One of my highlights was having my own dad on the show, um, who my dad and I have this really cool music connection. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things that it was really cool to get to talk about some of that when we didn't really do a lot of talking about that. So, uh, and there was a really cool surprise that I had in store for him on this. And yeah, it was a good time. So. I'm going to throw to that. How old was it when you got your first drum set? How did that all come about? When Did you guys share a drum set for a long time? Or did you? when did you actually uh, finally get your, your first one? It seemed like my brother bought another set, and I got his old set, if I remember right. And as you can see, you'll probably show some pictures after a while. I, my set that I threw together was all different colors, made out of several different drums. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the, the picture that you're talking about has got... I, um, I'll throw it up here at, the, at a later point, but yeah, so it looks like you've got a, a white sparkle kick drum, a white sparkle um, low tom, rack tom, and a red sparkle um, uh, higher rack tom, and a blue sparkle snare. Yeah, and a foam snare. And a, yeah, yep. So there's a lot of sparkle going on. You can definitely tell it's the 60s. Red, but, white, and blue. <clears throat> yep. Um, so what do you know whatever happened to any of those? I think actually didn't I donate those to you at one time? Uh, seems like. Uh, well, I haven't seen the rest of that drum set. I've seen the uh, the snare drum because you gave me that. That was what I ended up with as a first drum set. Um, and I, like I said, I've never seen the um, the white um, kick drum. Oh yeah, I don't know. Probably long gone. <laughs> hey, uh, look at there. Uh, yeah, cool one. man. Red sparkle. I'll be darned. That's a, they've got my looks like a bass boat, man. Yep. It's got Daryl and John Isaacs. <laughs> John, that's on cool yeah. on an MFA uh, sticker that you use for your <laughs> kick drum. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at the sparkle, man. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, darn. That is uh, so. I've got a, a shop there. I've got all my music equipment, like all my speakers and stuff for Sunset Productions. That's my prized possession when you first walk in. That's one of the first <laughs> things you see. So. Yeah, I've, I've hung on to that and cherished that. Um, yeah, no, you gave me um, that, and you gave me the blue snare that, that's pictured in this picture. Like I said, I'll, I'll show it later. But um, And that and a hi-hat. And so I had a three-piece drum set as my first drum set. And I'll never forget, um, you know, uh, I had it set up in the garage, and uh, with with only a three-piece, there's not you, you know a lot you can do. You're pretty limited. So, of course, the first song I, I learned that I'm like, okay, I've got everything I need to play this was We Will Rock You by Queen. So that was the first song I ever learned to play on the second generation drum set that I got, and cool. I still have, still have it, still have the uh, hi hat stand and stuff that you gave as well. So, yeah, that was cool, man. Um, I've I've enjoyed having some of my family on the show, which means we've got to get some of your family on the show. Yeah, especially now that they're not all the way down in Arkansas. That's right, they're in Lebanon. Yeah, and is it possible that your dad has a more epic mustache than you? It is it possible. Is. I mean, yeah, his, yeah. His, like, Breaks outside this barrier. Oh yeah, you got like, the whole handlebar. It runs right down uh -huh. there. And... Ooh yeah, brother. Um, <laughs> was your dad a wrestling fan too? Oh yeah, 
Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's that's what got me started. So. Okay. Um. Yeah. We've done so many uh, shows in the studio and stuff over the years. The studio's changed. Even we've had some great sponsors. There's been so many blessings that we've had. Um. One of the things that I've wanted to do with the show from early on was to have it in front of people. Yeah. And we were able to do that a few times. And um, I think I might have some footage. I don't even have this ready yet. So uh, I'll either keep this in or I won't. Uh, but we've done some live shows and had so many great friends join us for that. Had some great times. Played some games that we aren't able to play on the show because of copyright and stuff. Right. Um, and space. And we've just had so much fun stuff with that. So I just, I mean, we can't do a best of and not mention our live shows right. that we did. Um, and now we've kind of taken some of that and brought it into the studio by having an audience here in the studio with yeah. us while we're filming some of this. So uh, it's, it's been in the best of both worlds. Uh, that being said, that's going to kind of wrap things up for this 99th episode. 99. But that means that next week is the big 100. Oh my gosh. 100. Um, so yeah, we've got Paralandra. Paralandra is going to be here. And I've heard of those guys. Have you? I have. Hmm. Seems familiar, eh? Yeah. Uh, we're going to do something completely freaking different next week. We're not going to play some of the same old games. Uh, we may or may not interview people. I don't know. We don't know yet. It's it's. Yeah. We've we, got a lot packed into this our show. show. Uh, yeah, sure, right, yeah. It's our show. We can do what we want. Yeah. Uh, including playing Family Feud. Yeah, which uh, who's gonna win? Who's gonna lose? Huh? 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 Don't know. Um, so yeah, we we're, we're gonna have a super fun episode. We've got some celebrating to do next week. Uh, but I really wanted to take this episode to say thank you because yeah. there would be no hundredth episode, there'd be no tenth episode if we didn't have an audience. And if we didn't have an audience that cared, it wouldn't be fun enough to continue on a hundred episodes. So thank you so very much. And also, Josh, thank you to you. Thank you for joining on this crazy train of an idea um, for all the countless, countless hours of work behind the scenes yeah. that it takes. Um, it means a lot. And I sure couldn't have done up to this level without you. Well, I am just honored that you invited me in. I've had so much fun doing this. Uh, it's just enriched me so much that you probably could never know. Yeah. Man, uh, it's hard not to get emotional. But don't forget. Times are hard for everybody, so may your cup of coffee and your love of music be strong, but your sense of humor be even stronger. We'll see you right here next week for episode number 100! 100! Bye!